this is Mark again. A few weeks ago, I, I was unpacking my new MacBook Pro and I had some problems with it with the Keychain app and it, and it kept doing all this funky stuff and, and I was frustrated. I, I was wound a little tight because I'm used to my MacBook or my Mac products, my Apple products working right out of the box and I was in a hurry. And so I called Apple Care a little frustrated, but when the rep got on the phone, she just completely changed my state and made me again a very happy and loyal Mac customer. Let me explain. First thing she did when I explained the problem was she did this. She said, oh, Mr. Finner, she said, that must be frustrating. I thought, it is frustrating. She, she gets it. Then she said, tell me about it. And I told her the problem again, gave her some more details. She asked some questions. She says, great news. You're in good hands. I'm going to get you taken care of. And then she went about resolving the issue. I got off the phone. My MacBooks run fine ever since. And I'm a happy, loyal Mac fan. Now, let me compare and contrast this with a bank that I, that I recently left. I had some trouble with Quicken. I called the bank. First of all, I sat on hold for 18 minutes. When they finally picked up the phone, I was wound a little tight. And so I asked the question, is this the standard of service that you typically offer customers? She immediately got defensive, told me that it wasn't her fault, and which just made my temperature just go up just a little bit. And so I, so I thought, you know, what lesson did I learn from Apple? Number one, connect with your customers. You know, you gain rapport or you connect when you can predict the emotion that they're feeling. So start answering the phone with, oh my gosh, that must be frustrating or, oh, you must be disappointed or, oh, you must be mad and see if that doesn't help you immediately grab some rapport, connect some rapport uh, with that customer. Number two, listen, listen to where their problem is until the point that you can assure them that they're in the right place. So step number two, listen. Step number three is assure them that they're in the right place, that you're going to take care of them. You know, good news, Mr. Finner, I can take care of you. Number four, resolve the issue, get the issue fixed as expeditiously as possible. And then step number five is follow up. Now, I like to follow up a week after the problem's fixed to make sure that it's still good. And then I like a second or a third follow up, maybe several weeks out, again, just to confirm it's, it's fixed and it's fixed properly. These can be done through a phone call or they can be done via email. Put this practice into place and I promise you it's going to make a difference. But you may have something that works for you. So give me some comments below if you implement this process and it makes a difference or, or give me some comments below and let me know what you do, what you found to be successful for you and your team. Continue to rise up, continue to focus on creating those diehard fan clients and until next time, lead with passion. Mm -hmm.